Bam! Mr. Taru, so you're doing your calculus homework, practicing your product and your quotient rule, and then you end up with a problem like this, which is y is equal to x to the 3 fourths power times the cube root of x squared plus 1, all divided by 2 plus 5, all that raised to the fifth power. And this is going to be a lot, a lot of work if the only tools in your toolbox are the product rule, the quotient rule, and, you know, the power rule for finding derivatives. So what we're going to do is we're going to work through some logarithmic differentiation. We're going to let natural logs, you know, that concept maybe in pre-calculus that you were just like, oh, logarithms, they're going to come in really, really handy right now. Step one, we're going to take the natural log of both sides of this equation. And what that is going to allow us to do is then on the right hand side where we have all this multiplication and division going on, that, that uh, power of one third around the x squared plus one, we're going to be, be able to expand all of this into separate natural log terms. So let's not forget the natural log of a times b is equal to the natural log of a plus the natural log of b. Remember, logarithms give us exponents, and you add exponents when you're multiplying under a like base. In this case, the like base is log base e. And the natural log of a divided by b is the natural log of a minus the natural log of b. And then our third property of natural logs, or really any logarithms, is when you take a log of something that is raised to a power, you can bring that power out front and change it into multiplication. Because remember, logarithms give you exponents, and you effectively have an exponent raised to another exponent. So the, um, the power rule basically here is going to say that this is equal to b times the natural log of a. So we're going to expand this second line here to be the natural log of y is equal to the natural log of x to the 3 fourths power times the cube root of x squared plus 1 minus the natural log of 2x plus 5 raised to the fifth power. Now we are in calculus, so I'm not going to break this up into every single individual step. Actually, maybe yes I will. Uh, so we have now this is going to be the natural log of y is going to be uh, equal to the natural log of x to the 3 fourths power plus the natural log of x squared plus 1 raised to the 1 third power because of course inside this radical we have this expression raised to the first. So now that expression is going to be raised to the one-third power, writing that radical as our fractional exponent, minus the natural log of 2x plus 5 raised to the fifth power. Well, now we're going to go ahead and just drop all, use a power property for um, the expansion of natural logarithms and bring all these powers out front. So we have the natural log of y is equal to 3 fourths times the natural log of x plus, bringing this power down of one-third, one-third, times the natural log of x squared plus one, and then minus five times the natural log of two x plus five. Now that we have taken this very complex um, fraction and written it as, as three separate terms dealing with just natural logs, we can take the derivative of each of these individual terms, remembering, of course, that the derivative of natural log is, or the derivative of the natural log of u is u prime over u. So we're going to have, for here, the derivative, uh, and we're taking that derivative with respect to x. So we have the derivative of the natural log of y is going to be equal to 1 over y, and then times dy dx, which you may very well be writing as y prime, is equal to 3 fourths the derivative of natural log of x with respect to x is 1 over x. Now we've got 1 third times the derivative of x squared plus um, 1 is equal to 2x over our original x squared plus 1, 
And now we have, clean it up a little bit, minus 5, the derivative of 2x plus 5 is going to be just 2. So there's our u prime over u, which is 2x plus 5. Now, we're not going to clean this up too much here, because uh, the whole point is to show you how you can get to the derivative uh, quite quickly. Now, whether or not this format's going to match, say, a multiple choice answer, if this happens to be a multiple choice question, is another thing. But we will just simply need to, maybe just a tiny bit here, we have 1 over y dy dx. We've got 3 over 4x plus 2x over 3x squared plus 3, or maybe just write it as 3 parentheses x squared plus 1, of course, minus 10 over 2x plus 5. Actually, that, leaving that in factored form would be beneficial if you wanted to, for some reason, uh, add all three of these fractions up. But now, to find out what y prime is, or dy dx, we just simply have to multiply both sides of the equation by y. So y prime, another version of writing um, our derivative y with respect to x, is equal to y times all of this. Now, just think of like when you're doing implicit differentiation, you're not allowed to write a second, deriv second uh, derivative with a first derivative in the expression. So I don't really want a y prime or dy dx in terms of x and y. So we're just going to come up here and find that original expression for y and substitute it in, and we're going to be done. y prime is equal to, not a clean answer, but we got there much quicker than we would have had we just been using the product and quotient rule. That version wouldn't be clean either. It's a very neat looking solution. So we have x to the 3 fourths times the cube root of x squared plus 1 all over 2x plus 5 squared times, well, all of this. We have 3 over 4x plus 2x over 3x squared plus 3 minus 10 over 2x plus 5, and that is logarithmic differentiation. You want to pull this out of your toolbox anytime you start seeing really complex uh, combination of multiplication and division where you just know that, man, I do not want to take that derivative with just the derivative, uh, excuse me, the product or quotient rule. I'm Mr. True. Bam! Go to your homework. Thank you.